This video is brought to you by 1Password. What's going on guys, this is Sam, and today I wanna to do a very preliminary speed test between iOS 11.4 here on a gold iPhone 8 and iOS 12.0 on a red iPhone 8. So these are the same device, they have the exact same processor specs inside across the board, and Apple said that in iOS 12 the performance is reportedly better on older devices, but after using iOS 12 on the iPhone 8 for just a little while, it definitely felt faster than what I was used to experiencing. So I just wanna launch some apps, browse a couple of websites, and see if there is actually a speed difference in the very first beta of iOS 12 when compared to the same device on the latest public version of iOS, which is iOS 11.4. First, let's start off with camera three, two, one. All right, definitely popped a little bit faster on the iOS 12, iPhone 8, news three, two, one. Once again, iPhone 8 on iOS 12 beta, and you have to keep in mind this is beta software, and I would assume that iOS 12 would actually be a little bit slower here just because it is beta 1. This just came out a few hours ago. It's not actually a public version of iOS. Jumping down to music, 3, 2, 1. Once again, the iOS 12 version actually beat it there. Let's head over to the App Store, 3, 2, 1. All right, so the iOS 11 app store was actually a little bit quicker than iOS 12. That is the first time that iOS 11 one clock. This is a pretty simple application. I'm sure it'll load about the same on both. Three, two, one. Yeah, pretty much a dead tie on both of our devices. I wanna jump over to third-party apps now. Let's try Sonos. Three, two, one. And it actually brought up everything quicker on iOS 12. Let's try another third-party app. Three, two, one. And uh, iOS 12 beat it by just a hair at the very end, but they were they were roughly the same. Uh, let's try Apollo, one of my favorite Reddit apps. Three, two, one. And definitely faster, actually uh, noticeably faster there on iOS 12. That's actually pretty crazy. I did not think iOS 12 was going to be that quick. Next, we'll go Tweetbot, Instagram, and then Facebook. Three, two, one. A little bit, a bit quicker here on iOS 12. Three, two, one. Definitely loaded a little bit faster on iOS 12, and then Facebook, this will be interesting. Three, two, one. Once again, loaded faster here on iOS 12 than on iOS 11. Still blowing my mind here because iOS 12 is in beta. Let's try Flappy Dunk and Flipmaster. These are two games. Three, two, one. All right, looks like iOS 11 actually beat it there. Three, two, one. And iOS 11 beat it by just a little bit again. But they're roughly the same here. There's not a huge difference. And GarageBand. Three, two, one. It loaded everything on iOS 12 a decent amount faster than on iOS 11, but there was a lot to load. Uh, so that's interesting. Apple's apps seem to load a little bit faster on iOS 12 than third-party apps do. Let's try one more with FameBit. Three, two, one and pretty much identical. So I've noticed that third-party apps feel either a little bit faster on iOS 12 in general, uh, or about the same on both, where a lot of the first-party applications, let's let's try camera once again, three, two, one, load almost 100% of the time better on iOS 12 than they do on iOS 11. Uh, let me try one more right here, going back to maps, three, two, one. Once again, we got in a little bit quicker on Maps on iOS 12 than we did on Maps on iOS 11. I want to jump over to Safari now, test a couple of websites here. Let's try Apple.com. Looks like iOS 11 did win by hair there. Let's try YouTube. And then iOS 12 won that time. Uh, let's try my website, iPdidOS.com. Loaded quicker on iOS 11 for sure. And then let's go over to r slash Apple. And actually one on iOS 12. So that was pretty much 50-50. I would say in Safari, there haven't been that many improvements year over year. But let's go ahead and actually run a Geekbench right now to see if there is a hardware difference between the two. I would assume that iOS 12 will get higher scores than iOS 11, but we'll run this and then check back in a second. This is pretty crazy. I would suggest running more of these before calling this conclusive. I only ran one test, but this is actually a gigantic difference. 4,163 on iOS 11, 4,237 for the single core score on iOS 12. See an even bigger difference with multi-core. 10,073 on iOS 11 versus 10,469 
on iOS 12. That is nearly a 400 point difference between iOS 11.4 and iOS 12 beta 1, and that's kind of blowing my mind. Before wrapping up today's video, I want to give a massive thank you to 1Password for sponsoring today's video and making it possible. 1Password is a password manager that helps keep you safe online by securing all of your usernames and passwords behind one single master password that only you know. I use 1Password every single day. I love it so much, and I think you'll love it as well. Right now, you can get three months of 1Password for free by signing up at onepasswordcom slash WWDC18 and start being safer online today. I'm totally shocked at the performance on iOS 12 versus iOS 11. Look at this right here. It's not even loading on iOS 11 until now, both in the exact same state, both nothing was playing, uh, and iOS 12 absolutely destroyed iOS 11 on the exact same device. Now keep in mind that I ran this test on one of Apple's latest products, the iPhone 8. At the keynote, they highlighted that on things like the iPhone 6, the performance and the improvements there could be much, much more dramatic. And I would definitely assume that to be the case, considering that even on my iPhone 8 on iOS 12, I was seeing some minor performance improvements when launching apps, even though iOS 12 is a beta version and iOS 11.4 is the latest public version of iOS 11. I never thought I would say that a beta is actually faster than the public shipping version of iOS, but that is the case here with iOS 12 beta 1. I got to hear your thoughts on this down below. What do you think of the performance improvements and speed improvements inside of iOS 12? A lot of the time, Apple gets up on stage, they'll mention some things, and they turn out to be partially true, but they are absolutely true here with iOS 12. I think it was well worth the wait and I think Apple made the right choice by pushing back a few features for iOS 13 next year and really focusing on the core experience with iOS 12. So if you enjoyed watching the video, it does help me out if you drop a like. And of course, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future iOS 12 videos. If you want to help support the channel, you can head over to shop.iupdateos.com or patreon.com slash update. That'd be incredible. For now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great and I will talk to you in my next video.